Here's a problem on factorization of polynomials. We'll have three approaches and we'll do the work for two. So, we'll have the polynomial p of x given by x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 13x squared plus ax plus b. a and b are unknowns to be found. We're given x squared minus 3x plus 2 divides p of x. Questions. First, I want to find a and b. Then we want to show that p of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x. Now, for our first approach, since x squared minus 3x plus 2 divides p of x, that just means I can write p of x as okay, our polynomial here times another quadratic with unknown coefficients. So we'll just multiply these two quadratics together, set it equal to p of x, and then solve away. Now, since this method doesn't use any technique, we're not going to show the work for this. Our second approach is the best approach, but it requires that we have synthetic division in our toolbox. Now, if we factor x squared minus 3x plus 2, I get x minus 1 times x minus 2. So the zeros of our quadratic are 1 and 2. Because our quadratic divides p of x, 1 and 2 will also be zeros. So that means I could break down our polynomial by dividing by x minus 1 and x minus 2 using synthetic division. Now, recall how we use synthetic division. If I want to divide x minus 1 into p of x, okay, it's always going to be x minus c. The c we put here, so that's going to be a 1. In this top line, we're going to load in the coefficients of p of x. So I'll have 1 minus 6, 13, a, and b. And if we were missing any powers of x there, we would just use 0 for the coefficient. Now, our rule is we start in the top row at the 1. I drop it down. We're going to multiply our c by that 1. So it's going to be 1 times 1. I move it to the second column, middle row. So I have a 1 here. I add down. I get a minus 5. And then same procedure. I multiply by the 1. Minus 5 goes there. We add, I get an 8. 1 times 8 gives me 8. We add, I get a plus 8. Multiply by 1 gives me a plus 8. Then we add, and I get a plus b plus 8. And we're done with our synthetic division. So now all we need to do is to interpret. First thing to note, the very last item here is going to be the remainder if we were to long divide. So because we have x minus 1, dividing p of x, the remainder is going to have to be equal to 0. So that's going to give me a plus b plus 8 is equal to 0, or a plus b is equal to minus 8. We also have, okay, we have p of x here. I'll have x minus 1 here. And then this last row is going to tell us the coefficients for the cubic that we multiply x minus 1 by to get p of x. So we'll have x cubed minus 5x squared, plus 8x, and then the constant term is going to be a plus 8. That takes care of 1. Now I want to divide x minus 2 into this polynomial here. So same procedure. We'll put a 2 here. The coefficients are just going to be the last row. So I'll have 1 minus 5, 8, a plus 8, and then remember we're setting this equal to 0 do our synthetic division. So the 1 comes down. I multiply by 2. 2 goes there. We add down the column. I get a minus 3. 2 times minus 3 gives me minus 6. We add down. I get a 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. We add down. We get a plus 12. And then because we know x minus 2 divides evenly into this cubic, the remainder has to be equal to 0. So that says a is equal to minus 12. Going to our equation here, we have b equal to 4. That answers our first question. Now note, we'll also have, okay, well, what happens when we factor this? So we're going to pull out an x minus 2. And then what's left, we just read off of the last row here. So I have x squared minus 3x plus 2. And that's our p of x. 
Now, that lets us factor p of x completely as x minus 1 squared times x minus 2 squared. We take any number and square it. We get 0 or a positive number. So that means p of x is always greater than or equal to 0. So that's our problem. Now, for a third approach, if we didn't have synthetic division, well, we know how to factor our quadratic that divides p of x. So we'll have that 1 and 2 are zeros of this quadratic, which in turn means they're zeros of p of x. Now, if we put 1 or 2 into p of x, we expect to get 0 out. So let's see what happens. If we put a 1 in, we get 1 minus 6 plus 13 plus a plus b. I set that equal to 0, I get a plus b plus 8 equals 0. If we put 2 in, I'll have 16 minus 48 plus 52 plus 2a plus b. We set that equal to 0. When I simplify, I get 0 equals 20 plus 2a plus b. We take our two equations. Okay, I'll set them up as so. We take the difference, and then I get a is equal to minus 12. We substitute back in for a. We get b is equal to 4, and that checks our previous work. Now, in this case, to get to your full factorization, you're going to have to do long division using the x minus 1 and the x minus 2. If you tried to find other roots, okay, you wouldn't find any using the rational roots test other than your 1 or 2. If you have some calculus, one thing you could try, if you're looking for multiple roots, what you would do is you check your derivative at your previous zeros. So I take the derivative and then evaluate it 1 and 2. If I get a 0, then I know I have multiple roots. So it wouldn't tell us the multiple. To do that, you keep taking derivatives.